reached true crime's coldest winter and i'm winter i'm here to talk about the true crime i'm here to talk about the true crime cases that simply plagues me we're on part two of part one of the baffling case of beth doe we talked about a girl named evelyn colon she was last heard from in mid-december in 1976. her family hadn't heard from her since and we also talked about a beth doe after finding her and her unborn daughter under a bridge in Pennsylvania. Their bodies were dismembered and placed into three separate suitcases. Authorities could never link Beth Doe to any missing persons in their databases. Beth Doe had been buried in 1983. And in 2015, an updated reconstruction of Beth Doe had been released to the public. And in 2019, a tip was submitted to police by an individual claiming to know someone who resembled the reconstructions of Beth Doe. The individual's name is Madeline Cruz. Madeline spent time in the Massachusetts cities of Lenox and Framingham. In Framingham, she resided with a foster family. Around 1974, when she was about 16 years old, she had run away to Terrytown with her foster sister, but her foster sister had returned home a week later. In the summer of 1976, Madeline had called her friend to request some money and she claimed to have been pregnant. Madeline was never heard from again until the media reported a potential link to Beth Doe. And later on that month in 2019, the police actually confirmed that Madeline Cruz was alive and well. So she was eliminated as a potential identity to Beth Doe. It was a dead end once again. In 2020, a piece of Beth Doe's femur was submitted to a lab in Texas where a DNA profile was obtained and a possible link to a family member was found. Luis Colon Jr. was contacted by investigators and he confirmed that his aunt had gone missing in the 1970s and his father, Luis Colon, positively confirmed through description that it was his sister, Evelyn Colon, whose body that was found back in December of 1976 nearly 45 years later. He then recalled to investigators that the father of the unborn child found with Evelyn, formerly known as Beth Doe, was Luis Sierra, Evelyn's then boyfriend. Evelyn's sister, Migdalia Colon, was also interviewed by investigators. She recalled that in mid-December of 1976, Evelyn told her mother that she had not been feeling well, and she also asked her to bring her some soup. But when they arrived at the Jersey City apartment that was shared by Evelyn and Luis, they found that it had been cleared out. Magdalia also told police that Luis had been abusive and he had also been jealous of Evelyn, going as far as locking her in their apartment. It was also said that Evelyn had told her mother that she was afraid of Luis and if anything ever happened to her, that it was most likely Luis that was the culprit. And Luis, Evelyn's child's father, um, his name is Luis, but her nephew is also named Luis. It's spelled L-U-I-S, and I don't know how to say it. Is it Luis? Luis? I don't know. It's Luis. And of course, the infamous letter that Evelyn's family had received in January of 1977 that we talked about in part one. Well, they did receive the letter, and it didn't have a legible return address, as I had mentioned. And the letter was also in Spanish. And it stated that Evelyn and the baby were doing well, and if she needed anything, she would be in touch. However, Evelyn lacked the ability to write, so they didn't believe that Evelyn was the author of the letter this whole time. Her family, however, never reported her missing because they thought she was safe with Lewis, 
and that she had deliberately cut off contact with them. So police decided that it was time to turn their investigation towards Evelyn's child's father and live-in boyfriend at the time, Luis Sierra. He was found to be living in Ozone Park, New York. He initially denied even knowing Evelyn, but then he later admitted that not only did he know her, but that he dated her and that she was to have his child. The plot thickens. However, he couldn't explain the letter, which would have been written after Evelyn's death. On March 31st of 2021, Louis Sierra was arrested and charged with one count of criminal homicide in Ozone Park, New York. He is now 63 years old. As of today, Luis Sierra is awaiting extradition and no other further details have been released to the press. The family never believed that anything nefarious had happened to Evelyn, but they still wanted to know what happened to her. They believed that she had a family of her own and was taking care of them over the years. If it wasn't for Evelyn's nephew submitting his DNA four years ago, Beth Doe's identity would have most likely never been revealed and no one would have ever known what even happened to Evelyn. The more genealogy sites that he went on and the more DNA that he submitted, he felt like his chances were a little bit higher. He even found some distant relatives who showed up, but it was never Evelyn, of course. The family had never heard of Beth Doe, and as soon as they saw her reconstruction photo, they knew it was her. She was finally identified after nearly 45 years. Evelyn is currently buried in Whitehaven, Pennsylvania, she would have turned 60 years old on April 17th. The family named her unborn daughter, Emily Grace, representing the grace of God. And boy, is it a grace of God that this case was finally solved. One thing I should tell you, don't ever sleep on God. He will make sure there is justice one way or another, whether it's today or 30 years from now, someone is going to pay. That's all I gotta say. And as far as my life lesson, this is why family is so important. If Evelyn would have had a closer relationship with her family, they may have been fully aware that A, she didn't write the letter, and B, there's no way that she could go decades without contacting her family members. Evelyn's body was actually found a mere few days between the last contact that she had with her mother and when Beth Doe's body was found under the, the bridge in Pennsylvania. This case is just, it gives me the chills. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. It gives me, it makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Can you imagine a relative who is, who had disappeared, but you thought that they were doing fine and that they just wanted to stay away from the family for years and years, always wondering what happened to them, only to find out that they have been dead for decades and you never knew and the authorities never knew who Beth Doe was because Evelyn was never reported missing so they couldn't link her to anything and it's it's insanity beyond belief Louis Sierra is just an absolute monster I mean he he beats Evelyn to a pulp sexually assaults her strangles her takes her baby out of the womb, dismembers her body, and then shoots her after she is dead and puts her in suitcases and proceeds to live his life as if nothing had happened. What a creep. I know that only God can judge, but I'm telling you, this is just an abomination. So my lesson today again is just take care of your family. That's what family is for make sure that they're okay. And if you don't have any blood relative family, friends, they're also family. Check on them and just let's all take care of each other. You know, forget this on the back burner attitude. Let's take action now. Time waits for no one. So this is why I, and this is also why I'm bringing up this case because I want everyone to know the realities of the world that not many people talk about. This is real. This is what's happening in the world. Luis Sierra, he's tucked away. He is in custody waiting extradition since March 31st. And this is April 2021. So this was only a few weeks ago. Can you imagine your next door neighbor being an absolute murderer 
in the highest degree living right next to you never knowing that can you imagine a SWAT team going next door and taking your neighbor away in handcuffs because of a crime that they committed 40 years ago I mean it is madness anyway guys thank you for watching me again and if you have any ideas on any cases that I that are interesting or that you think that would be a good story to tell please let me know message me comment any if you have any other requests then you feel free to dm me and i will respond i'm always looking for cases i listen to a lot of true crime <laughs> so you guys thank you so much and i hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and you will see me very soon thank you again she wins every fight she's gonna rock your shit by the end of the night and the only advantage that a killer has is they think they have the right i listen to a lot of true crime i listen to it